Welcome. In this episode, I continue to make the balance wheel bridge for my watch and also do a bit of a dive into the Etacron regulating system. So now I've created the recess for my balance wheel bridge. As you could probably see, there was a bit of wobble on that uh, drill hole because I centered the workpiece on the uh, wax chuck using the dead center in the tailstock. Now, I believe that this recess doesn't need to be perfectly concentric with this hole. This hole at the current present moment might not be in the exact location that it is required to be. And um, this recess is only for clearance so the balance wheel can move freely under the bridge. I don't, and I, and I feel that setting up the centering scope to try and center off this hole, which could be a little out, is a bit of overkill at this point. And I feel that that's probably a good segue into addressing some of the comments and questions that I've been receiving into why I didn't use the centering scope to align the workpiece in the lathe to drill the alignment pins and that screw hole and even create the countersink. I'm of the opinion that if I've created these alignment pin and screw holes with enough accuracy to be located on the main plate, um, which doesn't have much uh, play in it at all, that once I, it's, it's set in and there's no movement on there and it's locked down, I then put the workpiece on the lathe with the centering scope and bore out the location for this hole in relationship to the main plate. I think that as long as this hole is perfectly centered, that there shouldn't be any issues because the alignment pin locations can't change and, and it's sort of, it's fixed, it fits, it doesn't have, um, it's not loose, it doesn't move side to side. This is an ongoing experiment. I'm testing new methods. I wanted to make this the fastest way possible and I feel that, um, that it may be accurate enough. I'm going to find out soon enough. And, and if that's the case, then in the future, I'll probably try to create some sort of drilling jig, uh, drilling jig to create these holes initially and just to speed up that process. Also, previously in one of my other videos, I mentioned that I had lost the stud holder, which I had gotten out of the existing movement. So now it's time to get another one out. Hopefully I won't lose that. So it's located in the balance bridge. And while I'm doing that, I thought I'd just do a bit of a, a dive into the Etacron regulation system, which is on the ETA 6498 movement, just its parts and, and, and certain features. So here's the Etacron regulation system. It's designed to be one of the uh, most efficient ways to regulate a watch. And I believe the uh, heritage of this sort of comes from 
um, designs originally by the Elgin watch company. You know, I could be wrong, but that's what I am led to believe. You can see this brass block with, and, and underneath is the uh, regulator pins. Here, this is the stud and the stud holder. So the stud connects to the end of the hairspring. As you can see the hairspring down below. Here is the fine adjustment regulator. And as you can see, if I move this, it is connected to this arm, which I didn't know this until I had opened one of these. So these are actually two pieces and you can tell that now with seeing this sort of slot cut in here. And um, so these are a friction fit between this arm here and, and this regulation um, over this side. So I'm gonna start disassembling the balance system to get this stud holder out and, and use it for my watch. And to help me remove the regulation system, I'm gonna be using these two tools here. So this fork-like tool will help me remove the stud out of the stud holder. And this tool sits perfectly over the brass block, which sits over those regulator pins and used to rotate it. So I move the stud holder counterclockwise and, as, and if you can see there's a little sort of um, tab that sticks out underneath the, um, underneath the fine adjustment arm. And then I rotated this brass block where the regulator pins are attached to be in line with the slot. This allows the pins to be fully open so when I pull this stud carry out I'm not going to damage the hairspring, hopefully. So it's a bit tricky to detach the bridge from the hairspring when it was still in the movement. So I just flipped it on its uh, back and, and just gently with the tweezers, uh, grabbing the stud holder to pull it through, trying not to bend uh, the, the hairspring. So there it is removed. So now we're just left with the regulator system. I'm just gonna push it out from the back in the jeweling tool and everything and now everything sort of will just fall out because it's all held in by the shockproof setting. There's that little arm that sticks off the end of the stud holder and it fits within this groove to sort of regulate how far across the stud holder can rotate on the balance 
wheel bridge. My design for the balance wheel bridge doesn't incorporate that slot. And also my balance wheel bridge is thicker than this one, than the original. So I'm going to fold the arm off that stud holder so it's going to fit inside my watch. So something that's pretty exciting that's coming up in um, the next couple of months is that I'm heading over to Europe for a bit of a family holiday. We sort of planned and booked this at the beginning of the year when there was some sort of cheap airfare tickets and uh, you know it this trip is kind of on uh, on a bit of a budget so unfortunately I don't think I'm going to be able to get to Switzerland at this point in time but I, I hope I can you know stop into some really great museums uh, along the way if you have some great suggestions or things to see in London Paris or Venice please let me know in the comments and hopefully I'll be able to to check them out along the way. But um, I'm very excited for that. I think for tonight, that's all I probably can get through. As soon as I step out the door, I'm always looking forward to come back into the workshop and, and continue on. So till next time.